All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen of Eco Diesel Land? Today, this is um, I was installing my Banks Bullet today, and I decided to uh, take the EGR diffuser tube off while I'm at it, while I've got the uh, air cleaner off, and um, while I'm back there in the back of the engine compartment. So my truck has 144,000 miles on it. Um, this is what my EGR diffuser looks like. Um, uh, this carbon buildup is pretty soft, which is good, but what happens when this gets hard um, from excess heat is um, this these chunks are falling off into your cylinder and um, will cause engine damage. So, increased cylinder wear. So, um, this is really easy to take off. All it needs is a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter. That's it. I've never cleaned this before, but... Um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Doing a couple public service videos for you guys to make sure that you're taking care of your truck. So this is a can of my um, fuel. I'm just going to dip it in there. I'm pretty sure that'll clean that up. So this side looks like it's pretty good, but it looks like it's where it goes into the air intake is where it kind of gets real nasty. So let's take a look at the air intake. Ah, oh, shit. Holy fucking shit. Just what I thought. God damn it. So inside, alright, I'm going to go a little bit further. I haven't looked at this yet in there. That's the intake. Inside of there, I'm going to show you guys what... How this is designed. Son of a bitch. Bear with me a second. So I'm going to go through some books with you guys. I'm going to show you the way that this engine is actually designed in there. It's pretty cool. And I found out what is going on with uh, the truck. When the truck is cold, um, it runs really, really... Um, uh, there's really low power. Sometimes it chugs, depending on the temperature. If it's really cold, it'll chug uh, really bad um, until it warms up. Okay. So what I was um, going through here reading was the way that the air intake is designed. Um, there is two parts to your air intake system on this truck. There is a clean flow side and then there's another side that it, um, has these little throttle valve type things and uh, they're called it's called a swirl motor now the swirl motor at an idle okay so here's our air intake and here is the EGR diffuser tube okay this is what I've removed uh, so right here and on the other side these are both eight millimeters and this is uh, these two right here, 10 millimeters. You just undo those, and it literally just pops right off. Okay, so that that's all there is to that. Pretty easy to maintain and clean, uh, which is good. Um, but like I was saying a second ago, um, see we have two ports to our intake. One side is a straight through shot and the other side is handled by a butterfly valve and it's called a swirl motor. And so half of the air intake um, at an idle, uh, the swirl valves are closed by a little motor called a swirl valve actuator and they are held closed. Okay, When you are on an increased um, system off of idle, uh, those are supposed to return open by a spring. There's nothing 
to mechanically move those valves open. So they start getting full of carbon from the oil, um, from your oil getting by your crankcase vent tube um, and collecting inside of your intake, like you can see is going on on my motor, um, but also uh, from your EGR. Now the only way that I know currently to get rid of it is to um, have it programmed out by let's say Green Diesel Engineering and they'll do that. Gosh dang it, why can I never find stuff? So here is that tube that I removed. Here's a picture of it. Of it in place. Man, I can always find this stuff off of camera. And when it comes on camera, I can never find this stuff. I look like an idiot. Okay. What book was it that I was reading? Come on, swirl valves. Where are you hiding? Okay, so what I'm doing with my truck is I'm installing the bank's bullet <clears throat> but I'm also installing three one of the reasons why I'm doing that is I'm installing the bank's bullet it was because um, swirl valve right there 24 was this system the bank system will work side by side with my injection injection controller okay so here we go right here so our intake manifold is two pieces all right and here is the swirl valve motor the swirl valve actuator, and here are the two sensors to de detect the swirl valve position. And see, they're they're linked right here through the center. So, as you can see, um, with that, um, a picture of that, uh, what it looks like in my air intake. Um, something has to be done to control the amount of oil and carbon that's building up inside the manifold. So what I'm doing is I'm installing uh, a progressive water injection controller uh, side by side with my um, uh, let's see if I can clean this out. I'm clean. I'm doing that side by side um, with my bank's bullet, and I'm going to see how cleaning that. Um, Injecting the water will maintain the intake system, how well it'll keep it clean. I'm just going to run that all the time. I'm going to clean this real quick so let's see what happens. Okay, so here's my cleaned up tube. Alright, so this is what it should look like. Focus in there. So this is what it should look like. Nice and clean. Pretty. So what I did was I just dipped it in some uh, diesel fuel, let it sit. You know, uh, letting it sit for a couple of days would actually be pretty good. And then just coming out and scrubbing it every about three hours would come up with better results than what I came up with. But you guys need to be maintaining this. GDE, Green Diesel Engineering, showed that this was pretty freaking screwed up at 15,000 miles. And I don't, bl I don't uh, disagree with that. I believe them 100%. Um... So this is what's discouraging, is you stick your finger in there, you can feel the bottom of the intake, and there's a good flipping amount of this stuff. Okay, now what happens is when this stuff starts getting hard, uh, this, this shit's just like uh, gravel in your motor. This stuff goes right down into your intake, into your intake, um, into your intake valves, hardens up, gets hard as a rock, and then uh, wears out your cylinders. So, you know, you want longer life. You're going to need to delete your EGR. You know, you probably will not pass emissions, but I don't know. What do you do? You know, federal federal emissions says you got to have this crap on there, but. You know, it, it just destroys engines, and that actually makes emissions worse. You know, this is, this is, 
this is why you have high def consumption and why you're always going through regens is is because of this shit right fucking here. So I'll tell you one thing, when I get my new engine, um, if I have to put my new engine in, yeah, the EGR will not be working. Because, I mean, this is ridiculous. You can't have this kind of stuff in your motor. I mean, that's what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. And you know all the stuff that I've done to try to prevent a lot of oil in there. I don't know what it looked like without what I've done. But, uh, you know, I don't have any check engine lights. I don't have any problems with my truck. Um, it's just preventative maintenance. Okay, so let's go around the rear side of the EGR. I can't see it, so I'm going to use my camera here to look. So that side looks pretty good. That's excellent. This isn't clogged up at all. That's excellent. All right, so that's good. It's black, but it's, it's not bad. So what happens, um, I've heard a lot of people that want to remove their engine cover, this little foam piece. Okay. And that is perfectly fine. If you guys went to GDE and you guys turn the EGR off, fuck yeah, take this dumb thing off. You can go ahead and take this off. Um, throw that shit away if you turn the EGR off. But you got EGR, you have to keep that stuff on there. And the reason why is it keeps this intake manifold and the EGR temperatures hot so that it doesn't back up and um, start backing up through this tube and start blocking up here into your EGR cooler. This thing serves a lot more purpose than just for noise. People think this just has to do with noise. No, this is temperature control as well. And as you can see in the tube, the only exposed portion that was clogged up was right here. And that's because it's introduced into the colder air intake um, so that this can this EGR gases can cool down. Um, and the reason why it's working here and not clogged up all the way back here is because this is kept hot. you got to keep the EGR gases hot. So if the inta air intake gets too cold, that stuff will start um, solidifying and getting into chunks. So, you know, you're going to get pretty dirty cleaning this thing out. But uh, you guys need to be maintaining this and uh, taking care of this. So, in the meantime, until I get the EGR deleted, they, these big heavy foam pieces need to stay on. Because, you know, this tube has to stay hot. Those gases got to stay hot. All right. And then I'm going to be doing my water injection. So I've got the nozzle right there. And my progressive controller's coming. Um, and it's going to hook up to my bank's bullet because it hooks up right here to this, your uh, pressure sensor on the elbow out of the turbo. So I'm just going to piggyback it off the bank's bullet. And um, yeah, so if you're installing the bank's bullet, um, you're going to come into your engine here. And you're going to unplug this yellow connector. That's your fuel rail pressure. So you can see it looks like it's leaking. <laughs> yeah, all right. And then there's your uh, your T-MAP sensor. It's your manifold absolute pressure sensor right there. All right, just unplug that. And, and your little connectors here will go right in there. So in the meantime, <clears throat> I hope you guys are going to follow this uh, video and Hopefully heed this information. Hopefully this helps people. Um, but yeah, this is my little project that I'm doing today. Um, I am going to see if I can do an EGR delete myself. I'm going to see if I can get this programmed out myself because this is crazy. This truck's got to last me a long time and I, I promise you there's no way it's going to last with that much shit in there. I mean, there's just no way. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, you can see the valves right there. You can see the little butterfly valve. There's no way that thing's running, opening and closing freely. So that's why it's taking so long during the motor, mo morning um, when this truck is cold before I have full power. It's because all that oil needs to start warming up and 
uh, so those valves can start opening freely. And um, Hershey, I hope you're watching this because I believe uh, this may be your problem with your chugging your performance too. Because if those valves are starting to flutter, um, you will get jerkiness. And um, you know, if those valves are stuck closed, which is what happens when you turn the truck off uh, or when you first start it back up. See, there's the motor's not holding them closed right now, so they're open. But when you start the truck up, they, they'll go back closed. So I'm pretty sure that's what your problem is. But, um, you know, anybody can pull this off. There's no seals to break. There's rubber O-rings in it. You know, pretty badass, so there's no repair parts. You can just do this maintenance yourself, put it back together. There's no way you'd void your warranty unless you did something to screw it up. But um, there you go, guys. Hope you, hopefully you guys... Do some routine federal emissions maintenance crap.